Hey guys. Wow. You got here before me. It's so awesome. We see all these people joining. Thank you so much. We're just going to give a couple minutes and let everybody join and questions. You guys definitely put your questions in there. We only have a half an hour. So what we found is we answer them after, uh, but definitely put them up. And we have so many great things to talk about today. Such great people here. Look at all these folks joining. Hi guys. So exciting. That's awesome, awesome. So we'll get rolling in just a couple minutes here. We'll give it just two more minutes. Danny and Britta, you guys look so fashion forward we, today. We, we matched in our black, like our yeah. black, black, you know. I put <laughs> on for the occasion. Oh, <laughs> nice. I didn't do that. I probably should have. <laughs> I feel like my lips are so trapped. They're just you did. You did. chapstick, so we're we doing it's it. December. Fair. It's December. <laughs> Yeah, fair. I, I've been doing just a study in denim, different denim mm. lately. So I like it. Yeah, I've been a cool. something different. Yeah. Hey guys, yay! Love to see you guys joining. We're just one more minute. We'll get started. Awesome. Yay! It's fun to actually see some names that I know. That's exciting. Oh, That's it is. Awesome. Yeah, I'm watching the names as it scrolls through. <laughs> That's great. Super cool. Well, this is a this is a really timely topic. I think we've been seeing a lot more about information, and so I think it's also really interesting that we had this booked for some time, and and uh, all of this new content coming out. So cool, guys. We're just going to get started here in about a minute. Thank you so much, and we have Paula running the back end for us. So any questions that you have or anything like that, you can put them in chat. And you can also email us your support at prairieware.com any questions that you might have. Awesome. Yay. Welcome to Prairie Word Chat, guys. Yay. This is your third, fourth, fifth one. This is our fourth chat. We've had so many folks reaching out about us and we, yeah, it's just been really, really awesome. And that's what we intended to do is bring people together, our community and our experts, and just put that education piece out there. It's a huge part of who we are and what we do. So, And a great opportunity to ask questions too. So I'm sure yeah. there's, I'm sure you get tons of questions about your We get product. so many questions. Yeah, yeah. it's that's been great. awesome. And we love it. We love it. We love a good opportunity for education for sure. So cool, guys. We're, we're right on time. Let's go ahead and start. Welcome to our Prairie Circle chat. We're so happy to see you here. We're all about communities of support and bringing our community and our experts together and provide education. So tonight we have super awesome topic. It's ethical fashion. What does that mean? You're about to find out. And we have with us today, Danny and Britta. And so we'll just start with some brief introductions or not so brief, whatever you're feeling up for today. <laughs> and I'll start with myself. My name is Holly Markwald. I'm the CEO here at Prairie Wear. And I'm really honored to welcome Danny and Britta here. Take it away. Danny, you want me to go first or you want to go oh. first? I, sure. <laughs> um, I'm Danny, and I am a young breast cancer survivor. So I was diagnosed about five years ago. Um, I actually found the lump myself. I know a lot of people ask me that question, like, how did you find this? What happened? Um, I don't have a history of breast cancer in my family. I don't have any gene associated with it. So it was kind of a crazy occurrence. And a wild journey to date. So I have really enjoyed just meeting folks like yourselves and getting to be able to talk to the community and help educate around my story, my journey and what I've learned along the way. So it's been really, really exciting. But that's just like a little bit about me. I'm sure if there's questions, I will be happy to answer them. But yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, such a young, young age and all that you're experiencing is I'm sure you have um, a lot of, a lot of things to share and a lot of knowledge from what you've been through. So mm -hmm. thank you for having me. My name's Britta. I am a fashion industry um, person. So I've been designing actually about 30 years, believe it or not. Wow. I spent the first half of my career in New York City, um, working in the garment dist 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 district, <laughs> uh, 7th Avenue. And I worked 
on all kinds of product from mass, mass market to um, higher end design. And then I transitioned to Portland, Oregon, um, which is the athletic hub out here. Of course, we've got the Nikes and Adidas and all the outerwear brands. So I worked um, for Nike doing swimwear for many years and eventually launched a design consulting studio with a business partner. And we've been doing that for 10 years now, believe it or not. Uh, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and most recently, it was actually five years ago now, I launched Inside Fashion Design as a online platform to share insights and inspiration and resources with the community because as an experienced designer, I was getting so many questions from younger people like career questions or just job questions, um, mm -hmm. resources and whatnot. So we've built this platform as a place for that. And I absolutely love it. I'm doing blog stories and research and um, work with people like Holly and Prairie Wear to find the story behind the make and their purpose and um, really focusing on ethical brands and purpose-led brands. So it's super exciting to be um, to meet Holly. I met you a few years ago when you were starting and doing all the research and focus groups and all of that. So it's a great pleasure to be here today and see where you mm -hmm. are. Brand is gone and um, to have this conversation. So yeah, I think good segue, Britta, like good, good pass the baton. <laughs> so the, the reason that we're here today and what we're talking about is ethical fashion. And what Britta touched on and what's so important is we all have this opportunity as designers and producers to make choices around design. And that's where our communities come in and, and also our factories, our materials, our everything. And I think maybe we start with what is ethical fashion? You know, what, what Britta would you say is ethical fashion? And by the way, you can check out their website, insightfashiondesign.com. They have great blogs on this, but give it, give us a, yeah, sure. Um, you know, you hear so much today about sustainability, and that's equally as important. But where I see it is sustainability is more about the environment and doing the best um, production methods and labor methods and all that. So you're keeping a healthy planet. Ethical fashion is the people behind the 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 process so you can ask you know who made my clothes and you think about the person that sewed it but if you look at the full circle you know who's the farmer that planted the seed who's the farmers that harvested the cotton and then you know they transport it to the mill where they're spinning and and creating yarns and so there's all these processes along the way and there's a human being behind every single one of those so you could have a beautiful, sustainable cotton fabric, but if the people that harvested it or made it weren't treated properly, it's still, you know, it, even though you're doing something good for the planet, you may not be doing the best thing for the human behind it. So that's how I see ethical fashion is really, you know, who made your clothes, who was involved in that process. And um, just really considering, you know, the labor that they went into, were they treated properly? Um, mm -hmm. Is it fair trade, you know, healthy working conditions in the factory mm -hmm. and all of that. So that's, that's really, to me, what ethical fashion is. And I think one of the spectrums that you talk about in, in terms of that circle of, of ethical, it's it's the production, but it's also why are you designing? It's the thought behind the design. It's the research. It's mm -hmm. thinking about your community individually. And so for me, one of the things I was watching your TikTok channel, which Danny has a super awesome TikTok channel, you guys. It is so fun and so informative and I super love it. And I was watching the blog, I think it's from a few days ago, but it was basically post-surgically, how do you get dressed? What does that, what does that look like? You know, not being able to lift your arms. And that to me is one of those pieces that when you're designing, and I know for us, that was at the forefront. How do you create a garment for your community that's safe for them, safe for the environment? And mm -hmm. that's all part of that ethical circle. And yeah. so that was kind of that direct illustration of why we do what we do. And so... I just wanted to put that piece in there in terms of the efficacy. And that's where you guys really talk about 
design on inside fashion design of how important that is, how to be thoughtful. And that's part of that. Ethical. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's thinking about the purpose behind the brand because now there's, you know, there's so much product out there. And of course we want to support commerce and people doing business and making money. That's all still really important. But I, if you don't have a purpose or a bigger meaning behind your brand, it just seems like fluff. And it, you know, I think consumers now are asking for that too. They're looking for that. They want to support these kind of brands that have some purpose behind it. So um, that's a really good point and something to consider when you're looking at the brand that you're spending your money on. How would you know if brands are ethical? What are things that you look for? Because I, I don't know as a consumer really what to look for. There's a couple of things and I know that there's a few more, you know, Google search words we can do, but what, what would you suggest from your, from your experience? Yeah. I mean, Google is amazing and now there's so much information online and you literally can Google ethical fashion brands. And now there's many websites that will list brands that do research um, goodonyou.com is one of the main ones that I keep seeing pop up and they literally do a um, brand audit. Basically you can type in brand name and it'll tell you, um, m I mean, most of the brands I've, I've put in there, they do have the information. There might be some brands that they don't, but hmm. it'll, it'll actually, I don't know if we're on there guys. I've never been. We'll yeah. That's a check. Um, and they actually give you a rating. You know, so they, you know, they, and they might, so interesting. you know, I don't know if it's, um, I don't remember if it's, you know, like by points or stars, but say it's a 10 star system, the brand could be at a seven, you know, because they are they're they might be aiming to do all of these things, but they've gotten this far and they're still trying to achieve the rest of it. So there's a lot of um, ways to look up the transparency of a brand if you just go online and they're tr being transparent on their website you can really get a good sense of you know what they're doing and their efforts um, of course there is greenwashing that we have to be careful about where they say they're doing things but then really it's it's just all talk and marketing mm -hmm. um, so good, really good on you point. Sure. what I'm hearing is there's a lot of information out there and mm -hmm. for someone like yourself, Danny, when you're looking for something that's safe for your skin and you're really aware of whatever you're putting next to your body, yeah. what are some of those keywords that we can look for? So I know there's a lot of hypoallergenic out there. We're Oak Tech Standard 100 certified, which then makes it safe for skin. But what are some of those? So we have this website, but you may or may not be on that brand. And also what I'm hearing is that's also somewhat subjective. So just kind of generally, what would people look for? So safer skin or sustainable? What are, when you say greenwashing, I also think that's a little bit sub subjective. So what does that mean? What kind of questions can we ask? Oh, did I put you on the spot? I don't want to do that. No, I, I didn't know if you were asking Danny or- Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Britta. Oh, for greenwashing? Um, well, that's a tough question because, I mean, these brands will share information and talk about things that they're doing, and but you may not have access to really find out. So I think just doing your research in general, you can find so much good information. And if there's a brand that you're looking up and they just aren't clear or it sounds kind of like hype, you know, maybe it's um, just kind of trusting your instincts a little bit from what you can get online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's up to the consumer to really to do ask those questions and do their research. You know, it's so easy to just run to Target and throw a bunch of tank tops in your <laughs> in your shopping cart. And I'm still guilty of that. But if you're going to make a purchase, say, of a, a beautiful sweater or something, you, you can find the brands that are really um, providing the transparency and the information that mm -hmm. will give you the confidence that you're, you know, that they're telling the truth and that you're spending your money in the right place. And I would say, just ask them, you know, yeah, we say to any, anybody in our communities, ask us if you have a question, you know, yeah. love to answer that. 
And so I think transparency is key for who we are. And I think where a lot of brands are at as well. And so for you, Danny, and this question is for you, what is something that was key for you when you were looking for a post-surgical, in this case, a, a post-surgical garment or just even clothes? So there were a lot of different pieces. What were important things for you? Yeah, I think everything you guys are talking about, it's interesting from my perspective before cancer. I feel like I never, and I'm being completely honest and transparent, I feel like I didn't really look into anything. It was kind of whatever fast fashion was kind of happening at the time. But when I went through my cancer diagnosis, I think it changed my perspective, which I hope people are kind of moving towards this direction. And I think they are, which is really exciting from my point of view, but really being able to understand that what I'm putting my money into is actually supporting and helping a great company and the people that are working for them and that everyone that is putting the time and effort into something are treated well and everything is done well. And all of those things, you kind of just have this different perspective shift where you're really aware of all of the things that happen in the world. It's kind of crazy. I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of one of those things where you're just like, oh, I want to help everyone. I want to make sure everyone is good and happy and enjoying life and getting the value back for what they're doing and putting back into the, the universe, mm -hmm. um, essentially. So when I was looking for things and now when I look for clothes that I buy now, it's like really looking for the sustainable efforts and then also the ethical efforts too. So I find this really interesting because I haven't necessarily done like an extensive amount of research. I think maybe I'm trusting in some of the things that the brands are saying and showcasing on maybe social media or on their websites or whatnot. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think just understanding kind of the thoughts around what that is and then also making sure that it's safe for the skin. That's always going to be a number one priority to me because skin is a part of our health. And that's something that's super important for me um, and was during my journey, but also now after cancer and everything moving forward. So that's kind of a little bit about how I shop and look for things. But this is super interesting, Britt. I appreciate all the information you're giving because I'm like, I need to write it all down. <laughs> I need a cheat sheet. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in there. It's not necessarily easy. Like you just, if no. you need run to the store, you run to the mall and you ju you're just looking for something to wear to that party or whatever. Like, yeah. It can be time to go online and do all this research and, you know, so it, it is a challenge and I feel like, like we have to start taking on a little responsibility for our purchases and, and that requires some effort and it's not, it's not always the easiest thing and you don't always have time. But I think for the most part, if you can, if you know, you need something coming up and you can spend a little time Google Googling and researching. Um, you know, of course everyone's great with free returns for shipping and all that stuff. These days you can try things on at home and, and all that. So it's, it's going to be a, um, an ongoing effort. And, but what I see is so positive for the future of, you know, what the consumers are demanding and asking for brands and Holly, like you said, that you can email them and ask questions. And if they're open and transparent, you know, you can, you know, it's going to be a brand that you want to support. Mm -hmm. so. And to that point, in terms of you having to do the research as a consumer or me as a consumer, I think it's the brand's job. Do your research. You know, if mm -hmm. you want to be an ethical and sustainable company, do your research. And I think a lot of brands are out there doing their best job. So no judgment. I think there's lots of great work being done. And on the same hand, I think that we can do a really great job for consumers and meeting people like yourself, Britta, we just touched on ethical fashion from really the time where the product is made. And, and not just the product itself, guys, every little bit of, so if you have a finished bra for us, there's many different hardware, yarn, you know, zippers that go into that bra and every single piece has to come from a different location quite often. Yeah. And is that certified? Have, have you had, you know, do you know where all of your product comes from? Not just the finished product, but all of the parts of the product. Components, yeah. And did you do your research for your consumer base? And then what is the lifetime of your product? 
you know? So you mentioned fast fashion, Danny. What does that mean to you? Fast fashion to me is something that isn't going to last very long necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, I think when I say fast fashion too, it's kind of just going along with the trends and then, yeah, to your point, not lasting long, it's kind of, it phases out and then it's done and then you don't use those clothes anymore. And that kind of goes into a, a bad place in terms of environmental factors, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's finding the pieces I think that mean the most and are going to last long and you're going to be supporting something that's good and that's whole. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think for me, that's m my perspective on it and mm -hmm. what I would look for in a brand. Awesome. And that's what we look for in a brand too, <laughs> in our brand. Yeah. Uh, but I will say in terms of Britta, what you're doing with designers and some of the courses on inside fashion design, which are pretty awesome. One of them was really from conception and working through your product from step one. And mm -hmm. I think that new designers are coming up with that knowledge and awareness. And um, I'm wondering if you have some information beyond inside fashion design as well, Britta, where there's some initiatives or organizations that are helping young designers, but also established brands become more ethical and sustainable. Are there yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll mention there's a fa there's a, a nonprofit that's through the United Nations and it's called Ethical Fashion Initiative. And it's founded by Simone Cipriani, who happened to do a live chat with us um, two years ago at our Ethical Fashion Festival. And he's just this amazing Italian guy and he travels the world and most of their brands are based in Africa. Um, some in South America, but even if you just Google um, ethical fashion initiative, they have a design accelerator program where, you know, you apply and, and, you know, go through this process, but once you're selected, they actually help you build out your, those businesses for those smaller designers that are doing things, you know, traditionally oh. um, using their craft, their, their history of, you know, if they're in Africa, they've got special weaving techniques and whatnot. So, so that website and organization to me is very fascinating. I love following them. Um, there's another one that just launched this year. It's called the World Collective and mm -hmm. they are good. Um, we're kind of partnering with them. They're based out of New York, also connected to the United Nations. And they're an online platform that companies can join to get access to all the resources on how to build uh, a whole sustainable system, a circularity system. Um, they work with, you know, small and large brands um, and they go in and, and can really consult with them and kind of help you through the whole process. Um, so those are two that um, I can think of right away. Those are kind of the top of my brain. Um, and let's see, is there, I think that's still on your website. Yeah, yeah. And our yeah. website, you know, we do have um, a lot of blog stories and focus. Yeah. The, the website does focus on sustainable and ethical brands. And we love to share stories of brands that are in that space. So you mm -hmm. can find a lot of, um, you know, stories there. But also those classes that you mentioned, Holly, um, you know, one of them was designing consciously. And we bring in industry experts that have been working in the industry for years and years. So they've got the background of fast fashion, mass market, and now how it's transitioning into these better methods mm -hmm. and just a wealth of knowledge. So mm -hmm. check that out. And we've got more classes coming up and, and we love sharing, you know, the information. So it's a pleasure for us to do it. Yeah. And it is, we, we had the opportunity, obviously, to meet you early on in our process. And I will say that from day one, it's been a core decision from our team that we would be better for the body and better for the planet, you know, and not mm -hmm. something we even talked about. We've just learned, hey, you should talk about this stuff. And not just mm -hmm. because it's who we are, but also to teach other people, you can do this. And to teach our community, you can ask for this. Mm -hmm. Brands aren't doing this find a different brand or yeah. find that comfort zone of what works for you. 
again, no judgment. Whatever works for people, I'm I'm good with. Yeah, and but, there's yeah, I would say there's so many brands that are making an effort. Yeah, but it, like you know, turning the Titanic, you can't just switch overnight. It's a long process to do everything sustainably and ethically. So things are slowing down, and that's where you also hear about slow fashion. Um, so brands are making an effort. It's not like all fast fashion or all brands are are bad you know it's they could be really aiming you know it might be a three-year process to get some sort of um sustainability and ethical process built into their system yeah. so yeah it's like you said there's no judgment and i know people are trying and it's it's gonna be an ongoing effort and things are slowing down in a good way and and so there's a lot of positive things happening in the industry mm -hmm. that's great cool. here yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's good stuff. I, I'm very yeah. optimistic from what I see on my end and um, you know, I'm kind of behind the scenes so I can get a little insight from people and um, you know, even if your fabric isn't recycled or you know, you still could be doing little things to make positive impact, you know, moving forward. So I think that is a really good point. Like the little things, even what kind of bags are you using for shipping as a brand? Um, we always make sure they're recyclable, reusable, you know, and that's been also since day one. Mm -hmm. Tags, how many tags do you use? How many, how often does your garment have to be washed? How long does it last? You know, those are all questions that you can ask as a brand. And for us, it's about, the investment in the environment, but also people. So I want somebody to have, you know, one of our huggers last for as long as they need it to and longer and they can mm -hmm. give it away to someone else when they, when they feel they want to change it out, you know, and it's still awesome as it was in that first day. That's, that's been our goal since day one. And lo and behold, that's ethical fashion. And I love that we now have a, an arena where we talk about things like that where we can share with our community, but also with other brands. And that's been something that I've really enjoyed is talking to people like yourself, Danny, and people, of course, like you, Britta, where we get to just share this opportunity of why is it so important? And Danny, we know why it's important for you. And that's important for us as a brand to hear that. It's important for a brand to listen to who, who are you who is your community? Who are you trying to create for? And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the design itself that you forget that this design is for a person mm -hmm. and it's for their body and it could be for their lifetime. So if we think of it from that place, I think there's a lot that we can all learn and, and you create better design, I think, starting from there, so. Yeah, for sure. Keeping that end user in mind should be the main focus and goal. And, you know, what are they wearing it for? And in your case, in Prairie Wear, it's, you know, I wear mine just working out or whatever. And Danny has worn hers for, you know, medical reasons. And so you're covering this kind of niche market. Um, but all along, you've had that consumer in mind. Like, that's why you built the brand was for the, you know, those folks. And that mm -hmm. alone such a great, you know, way to build a business and, you know, focus on that, who's going to wear it and how long do they need it and, and all of those things. Said. So that it makes a, a really big difference in the, in the um, core structure of the business. I think also to love what you're doing, you know, when you really believe and love what you do, good things happen. And so this is part of it. Really love this opportunity. And to me, that's part of the ethics do people really love what they're doing there? Do they believe in it? You know, you can't really tell that from a website, but usually you can tell it from customer service or things like that. You know, there's those little, those little pieces that, yeah. that you can, Ooh, Danny, somebody loves you so much. I'd love to see that. <laughs> so that's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. I think oh, that's <laughs> okay. That's all. I the funny like antidote to that is people will comment and sometimes people's handles are so hard to read. I I feel like I have to preface that I'm I'm terrible at reading them sometimes because it's it's difficult. Well, like this one that's up there right now. It's like, yeah, exactly. I'm like that's 
great, but I don't know how to read that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got so. distracted by I love you so much. And I just I love <laughs> I always number one. <laughs> and, well, I have to say yeah. you were so impressive. And I was, you know, when I was getting to know you, just checking out your, your Instagram and your TikTok and what you've done is amazing. And, and it's a while. It's a very happy <laughs> place. So I, I appreciate what you're doing for, for the community and what you've been through. It's, it's, you know, kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. That was really sweet. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. And it's been, it's been fun. It's been, like I said before, and kind of the same thing I think we're all saying on this is helping people and bringing some good energy into the world is really the objective. And even though breast cancer was such a crazy kind of traumatic, hard experience, I think bringing some light to something like that is really important to help bring people some hope and an inspiration and yeah, some, some smiling and laughing and whatnot. And I like to be weird and that's just kind of what I do. <laughs> so I have a personal story to share about your TikTok, Danny. We were oh. with oncological surgeons and sharing your Halloween candy nipple <laughs> TikTok. And it was really transformative. There was a patient there that it just eased her anxiety, literally oh. eased really? Her anxiety and almost brings like a tear, but that's the kind of impact that that you can have. And I think that was really lovely. So there was a lot of anxiety about what will this be like? And it doesn't have to be so dark. And yeah. and you just shining that light is pretty lovely. Pretty Thank wonderful. You. Thank you for telling me that story. Oof, I'm going to try yeah. my best not to cry with that because some yeah. of the messages and the things that people tell me, it's like why I do this. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> And we appreciate you. I think there's this opportunity for education always. And guys, just like that, our half an hour is up. I can't believe how fast these go. Yeah, I know. So fast. It's like lightning. So <laughs> if there's any questions for Danny or Britta or Prairie Wear, you can send them to your support at prairiewear.com or check out insidefashiondesign.com or Danny on Insta or TikTok. I love her TikTok, I have to say. <laughs> uh, Danny underscore tropes. And so definitely check these these folks out thank you so much for joining us tonight you guys we really appreciate it and thank you for having us of you really thank appreciate you for having us and i really appreciate all this information it's super helpful and really and informative in so many ways and i hope everyone could feel that too yeah keep doing what you're doing both of you all you right well. thank you <laughs> thank you guys good night, Bye. 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 Bye.